Chapter 12 Joel lay curled on his side, facing his bedroom door. That's where his father would appear when he came and punish him. Then he, we, he wouldn't have to do it this time. He wouldn't have any choice. He'll punish him for yelling at him and for hitting him for daring Tony to swim out of his sandbar. Joel had known for the beginning well, it was his fault. From the moment Tony had disappeared and he had understood, running away had, hadn't changed a thing, and coming back hadn't changed anything either. Nothing could change what happened ever. The light summer breeze fing across the bed rustled the leaf and maple tree that was out his window. It was the tree Joel had been Joel and Tony had been building a tree house on. The sound of it the leaves but count the touch of the cool air on his skin was good. It was good to feel to be able to feel such things. But Tony couldn't. Tony couldn't feel anything anymore. Joel lifted his arm to his nose and stiffed. Then the smell was still there, and so sharply it was made his eyes sting. He supposed to, it would be with him for the rest of his life. Why had he had to be being done but for enough to dare Tony anyway? He knew he was Tony was like. If somebody dare, had dared him to walk through fire, he would have done that too. Joel pulled the push pulled the pillow uh, over his head, pushed it off again. His eyes were as dry, scratchy as a sandpaper. His wish his father would come and get it over with. The front door opened and it closed again. Joe could hear his father fending in the walk. Didn't he understand yet? That there was something that he could be walked out. That it was something that that bad from inside you when you didn't even know it was there. His father was moving up the stairs now, his footsteps heavy and slow as he stopped outside Joel's door hat earlier in the evening. Joel would wait quietly, hold his muscles rigid, all he knew pretending to be asleep when work his time. His father came in, he pulled his chair away for Joel's, Joel's text, sat it next to a bed very close, and sat down. At first, he didn't say anything, and Joel thought he was going to sit there all night. That's his way to punish me. He's going to sit there so I can run away, so I can sleep, so I, I couldn't even cry if I wanted to. Joel tried to keep his breath steady and slow the way he had done before. But he thought his thought he's been running for a long time, he had to gasp for the air. His skin was too tight, he was going to explode. <laughs> I'm sorry, his father says finally. Sorry, Joel boarded. It's not I can't say that word at all, A-S-T, I don't know. Rolling him over his back, why thank you sorry? Joel's, his father didn't answer at first, It just when Joel convinced that he was going to answer, and he said, I'm sorry I missed just the situation. I'm sorry I gave you permission to go. Joel didn't respond. And his father added softly, I'm sorry I was going to be there to help you, but you had to be so frightened and so alone. It was my fault, Joel said dully. The whole thing was my fault. Nobody, probably nobody could have found Tony in the water. His father replied, not understanding, and yet managed somehow he might pull you under. He was bigger than you ever. Heavier, he wouldn't have known he was doing. Joel thought of the swearing water was clothing over his head, pouring into his lungs and skipped ripped in his goose flesh. And then he thought of Tony, Tony taking dips of his bike. Tony James had a jig of the bridge. Tony pretended to be the perfect, perf, prehistoric monster. It should have been me, he said. Joel's father he took a hold of his arm. Almost roughly, don't you say that, he said. Don't you ever let me hear you say that. Joel looked at his father's foal in the face. It's my fault, he repeated. If he had gone down into the river, Tony would have been stayed out of the water. Maybe, his father said. Maybe not. there's no way you you can't live your life by maybes. Joel's arms was beginning to hurt when, father, when his father gripped it. But that wasn't enough. Nothing his father said or did was enough. Are you going to punish me? He asked. His father's side was silent again for a moment. His hand gently moved away for earlier pressure. Is that you what you want? You said, I was on my honor this morning. I was supposed to go anywhere except the park. His father merely asked, what would it teach you, son? More punishment? Since Joel had no answer for that, he said the only thing he could think to say. He said it harshly. I thought it were an escalation. Your hand isn't going to smell like it. Like what? His father raised to his hand in his face. Like the river, don't you notice the stink? 
He's fell over and filled his hand again, then over his bring his nose closer to his Joel's skin, then strained, I don't know what you mean. Joel, I can't smell anything, but I can't smell it. Joel wailed, it won't go away. His father didn't say anything. Make it go away. Joel spoke into a whisper, as if he were discussing another person standing in the room, someone who was could be forced to leave. His father smoothed through the hair of Joel's face. I can't, he said very quietly. The anger surged through Joel's veins. He wanted to push his father away to pummel him again. What was a good man that he couldn't protect him bad things happening when pushing him for make things right? You don't understand, he said through quenched teeth. I dare Tony to swim out of the sandbar. I knew he can swim all that well. I must have known, and I dared him. Joel expected. He didn't know what he expected, actually maybe expected the world to fall in. At the very last, he expected his father to raise up the rage. Instead, there followed only another silence. The kind that made him want to scream, he held himself carefully rigid, though and didn't move only waited. It, oh, it's going to be a hard thing to live with for both of us. His father said to the last, there's nothing that else to be done. Joel said out the new shutting out. What are you talking about? We didn't have, you didn't do anything? You didn't even know what you should have let me go. But all of them, it's just, but all, we all made choices today, Joel. You, me, Tony, Tony's the one who doesn't have to wait with us as choice. For a moment, Joel could only stare un uncomprehending as a man who wouldn't. Couldn't take away his pain. Tony uh, was free while he, he and his father would have to wait a terrible day forever. And though Joel quenched his jaw and squeezed his eyes shut, it was no use. He began to sob. Ah, uh, his father said, as he relieved and his wean forward, drawing Joel onto his lap. Joel felt awkward over his eyes. Surely there was no longer room for him here. But father wrapped his arms around him tightly. Joel checked settled into the holding between chest and shoulder, but racking soft folded him out of the lake of water. His father held him for a long time, saying nothing until Joel's tears came out without sound. His breathers were quivering gasps. And then his father held him, after a while began to patter in his breath and matched the steady rising falling of his father's chest. I will have to go back to bed now. He said finally, his father, instead of simply reasoning him, reached forward of his skirt back the covers, and he stood and braided him gently in a bed. He pulled a sheet up and tucked it in beneath Joel's chin. We will leave now. Joel thought his father sat down in the chair once more. Joel turned over his side, fancying his father this time. He was tired, exhausted, but tinglingly with like. He was also empty as though he would have been followed out with a knife. He tried to think of something to say, and only hear his father's voice. Do you believe in heaven? He asked at last. Do you believe Tony's gone there? His father went bent toward him. If there was if there's a heaven, I'm sure Tony gone there. He replied. I can't imagine what the heaven could be close to charming reckless boys. If Joel felt the world was sinking through the bed. What do you mean if he was in heaven? I don't suppose anybody knows. His, fa his father answered gently. What happens after he hesitated and when he came up to describe a series of circles in a far he said it was left and again it was finished statement and for him. I believe there's something about his life that goes on. I, it seems to, good to end a in the river. Joel's let his father sit through him so slowly he hoped for something firmer, more certain there, yes, for heaven, or certainly Tony is there now. He would have to settle through for what he got. And then what he was good, gentle summer night, a whole place inside that he got, got that felt through it might be never be fold. And then his man, his dad, who sat behind his bed. Will you stay? He asked, reaching a hand out attentively to touch his father's knee. Will you sit with me until I fall asleep? Of course, his father said. Yay! We finished the book! Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Okay, so this is the end of the chapter. This is the end of the book. And a new book is going to come on May 18th. So I don't know what book is going to be called. So I hope you enjoyed this reading. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!